Those are three events where I've basically declared that I'm going to be chosen and I've been chosen. I always use this technique and I always find it within a very short space of time. I have been in an audience of hundreds of people and got myself picked by the person on stage. She said that each and every one of you in this room has at least one, some of you multiple guardian angels. Imagine if it could just make every single day of your life easier and more effortless and for things to go your way. In this video, I'm gonna share three real life examples from my experience of how I've used the law of assumption to manifest things that I want in my life to go exactly like I want them to go. So if you want to learn how to use the law of assumption for yourself to manifest more things that you want into your life, keep watching. Welcome back to another video, or if you're brand new, welcome! My name's Lucy, and on this channel I share all kinds of things about personal development, spirituality, and how to become the best version of you. So if you like that kind of stuff, consider hitting the subscribe button. Example number one of how I use the law of assumption in my everyday life. Whenever I've misplaced something or lost something, I use the law of assumption to find it. So as an example, the other day I lost my AirPods, I couldn't find them anywhere. I was looking in all the usual places, all of the unusual places, and my mind started to worry and think, oh no, could I have left them somewhere when we went away? Could I have left them in the place that we were staying, the hotel? And then I just snapped myself back into it and I said to myself, I'm gonna find my AirPods, they're gonna appear to me somewhere really obvious and I'm gonna be able to use them later. And obviously I didn't know where they were gonna turn up. <clears throat> and of course I still had that little voice in my head that's like, but what if they don't? But I just thought, look, it makes me feel better if I just say, it's, it's gonna get sorted, it's no problem, rather than spiraling into some kind of anxiety hole. A few minutes went by, I don't know, maybe it was five, 10, 15 minutes. It wasn't long, point is I'd moved on. I'd got on with other stuff because I sort of declared that it was going to happen, you know, and so I wasn't stressing about it anymore. I just thought I got other stuff to do. Let me get on with the other stuff. <clears throat> Excuse my husky voice, by the way. I had like this coughing fit when I swallowed a bit of apple and I've still got this husky leftover feeling, but I'm alive, so I'm grateful. Don't dance while eating an apple, moral of that story. Anyway, I love how the universe did this, right? I received an idea to go to my handbag because I was looking for my lipstick and my lip balm. So I went to my handbag, I went to this sort of like inside purse, which by the way, I had looked in several times for my AirPods and could not find them. Then this time I go back to my, my handbag to look for the lipstick, open the pocket again, and the AirPods were there. Now I think they were there the whole time because <clears throat> What I did before, it was it's like transparent, right? So I kind of looked through it and I was like, it's not there, it's not there, I can't see it. I looked inside, it's not there, it's not there, I can't see it. But this time when I went there to look for the lipstick, I knew that my lipstick was in there and I knew I had to dig around for it. So I had a bit more of a dig and in moving a few things there, I found not only the lipstick and the lip balm, but also the AirPods, okay? So skeptical people might say, oh, you know, this is just luck nothing really happened, blah, blah, blah. And that's cool, you can think that if you want, but time and time and time again, whenever I misplace something, I always use this technique and I always find it within a very short space of time and it's always really simple and easy for me to find the thing that I've misplaced. Now, for those of you who are super into esoteric quantum physics concepts, you may even argue that the AirPods weren't there the whole time and it wasn't until I stepped into that reality and declared that they are there, that they appeared there. Or maybe you fit somewhere in between those two extreme views. The point is, ask and you shall receive. Those of you who also love this technique, by the way, I know there's lots of people in my audience who also use this technique whenever they've misplaced something. Please comment below, tell us your stories, give us more real life examples so people can believe that this shit works. The second example, this is going to blow your mind, okay? This is going to blow your mind, so keep listening. On three separate occasions, I have 
been in an audience of hundreds of people and got myself picked by the person on stage. Let me, let me actually unpack each one because they're slightly different from each other. So the first time I ever did this, Jamie was inspired. He had this inspired idea to take me to a guardian angels workshop. It's not really the kind of thing Jamie would normally go to, but he received the idea from somewhere to take me to this guardian angels workshop. And basically there is this woman who was speaking on stage. We were, we were all sat in this huge auditorium. There must've been about 500 of us there. And she said that she could see all of our guardian angels. She said that each and every one of you in this room has at least one, some of you multiple guardian angels by your side <clears throat> or behind your shoulders, hovering over your head. You're, you all have guides. And she said, I've never seen a single, you all have angels guiding you, guarding, guarding you. And I've never seen a human being without a guardian angel. This is her words, okay? I'm just quoting her. And this was like new information to me. I was like, what the hell? Like, I've always liked kind of the idea of maybe thinking that I have a guardian angel, but to think that she can see mine right now was a whole different level of realness. So anyway, of course I was a bit skeptical because I couldn't see them. And so the, 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 the day went on, she was speaking on stage. We were doing, it was like a series of exercises. She would get us to sit for five or 10 minutes and do some kind of written exercise. And then she would pick people at random to take the microphone and share their experience. So it wasn't like, raise your hand and I'll pick you. She would just pick people at random. So I thought, okay, let's see if this guardian angel thing works, shall we? We were there doing the exercise and I thought, okay, let me imagine my guardian angel. Let me picture my guardian angel. Still like kind of fuzzy, don't really know because I'm not familiar with it, but let's just go with it. And I said, guardian angel, get her to pick me for the next share, right? And I just pictured my guardian angel hearing that message and doing whatever I needed to do to communicate with this woman. And I re-emphasize, there are about 500 of us in this auditorium. Anyway, then when it's time to share, literally like a minute, two minutes later, she looks around, she's scanning the crowd, scanning the crowd, and her eyes stop just somewhere, just a little bit above me or behind me. And then she pointed at me and she said, that girl right over there sat next to the tall man with the hat. The tall man with the hat was Jamie. I looked at Jamie, tall man with the hat, looked at her and she nodded at me and someone passed the microphone to me and obviously I was just like, oh my God, you're not gonna believe what just happened. I asked my guardian angel to get you to pick me and you picked me and she smiled and nodded and like, I feel like it was a great maybe example for the whole room of people who maybe were skeptical. And maybe that's why she and my angel did that. Anyway, I was, my mind was blown as you can imagine. Then fast forward a few months later, I went to another event and they asked for volunteers to do this crazy thing on stage. And at this event, it was a hand raised thing and everyone raised their hand. Like there was again, maybe 200, 300 people in the room and most people were raising their hands wanting to do this thing. And so, and I was shorter than other people. I thought that he's not even gonna see me. It was Master Sri Akashana on stage, by the way. I was like, he's not even gonna see me. I didn't know him at all at the time. Like this was the first event I ever went to. I'd never met him in person. So he didn't know who I was. And I just went to my angel. I was like, okay, get him to pick me. So I raised my hand, he's scanning the crowd. And then he was like, you, and he picked me straight away. So. Is this the law of assumption? Is this guardian angels? It's a bit of both, I guess, with this story. Um, because the reason why I'm connecting guardian angels to the law of assumption is because then the third example I want to give about, you know, how I got picked from a crowd was actually not in a physical event. It was on an Instagram live. So I was tuned into an Instagram live with about 500 people, other people tuned in live. And the guy was this, uh, was this like international speaker and he was promoting his event, his tour. And he said, I'm gonna pick five lucky winners from this live to win one of my tickets to one of my physical events. So all you need to do to be eligible is uh, go to my latest post, tag three friends, make sure you're following me and come back again into this live and comment the word done. 
and I'll pick five lucky winners. So obviously you can imagine most of the people who were tuned into the live did that. Uh, but I just decided to myself, and I didn't even really care about wanting these tickets to be honest, but I, w I had just been listening to a Neville Goddard video about the Law of Assumption and about how if you just assume that something is going to work for you, that's the most powerful way that you can make it happen for you. I just thought, let's give it a go, right? So I was there, it was late at night, I was doing my hair, I was putting my hair into rollers and this live was on. I thought, let's just do it, right? So I was kind of unbothered either way. Um, so I just pictured, I just said, he's gonna pick me. And I went to the post, tagged a couple of friends, followed him, came back to the live, typed the word done. I was like, he's gonna see, of all the comments, he's gonna see that one and he's gonna pick my one. And then obviously that little voice in my head was like, uh oh, loads of other people are commenting, done, 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 done. Your, your comments going further and further and further up, Lucy, and there's all these newer comments. Should I, should I keep typing done, 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 you know? But I just said, no, nope. it's done. Out of all the people, whatever it takes, whether it takes him to scroll all the way back up to the top again of all the people who commented, whatever it is, however it's gonna happen, he's going to see my name and he's gonna decide to pick my name over a bunch of other people's names. That's just how it's gonna happen. And then for extra good measure in my head, because he's talking now, he's just carrying on with a live, allowing time for more people to do this exercise, right? So while he was talking away, I pictured him, I, I, I heard his voice in my head, reading out my name as one of the winners. So I just kind of like played a three second scenario clip in my mind, picturing him doing this. And I was just, I was excited about it. I thought this is gonna be fun. I wasn't overly bothered if it didn't work because I wasn't desperate to have these tickets, but there was still a little part of me that was a little bit nervous and a little bit like, I hope this works just for my own belief system, not about whether I get the tickets or not, but if this doesn't work, is this gonna maybe make me feel a little bit disheartened about the law of assumption? So I was like, it's, it's gonna be fine. This is gonna pick me. Anyway, guess what? Five minutes goes by, then it's time to pick. And he reads out one person's name. Great, they're the winner. He reads out another person's name. They're the winner. And I'm just waiting to hear my voice. And then third name he reads out was my name. Then I'm one of the winners. So I was one of the five lucky winners. Those are three events where I've basically declared that I'm gonna be chosen and I've been chosen. And again, some cynical people might think, well, how many other events or how many other competitions have you entered where you didn't get chosen? And honestly, not that many. Sure, some, probably a couple, but yeah, probably more times I've got picked when I've done used that technique than not get picked. And then the third example of how I use the law of assumption in everyday situations is for things like car parking spaces. We were on this road trip a couple of weekends ago and we stopped off at a service station and it seemed like everyone else did too because it was so busy. There was such a long queue of cars just to try and get into the service station, which is like, I don't know if that translates. It's like one of those places off the motorway where you stop to get some food and to go to the toilet. Anyway, such a long queue to drive in there and it was bucketing down with rain. We were desperate for the toilet. Everything was moving so slowly. It took us about half an hour to get into this service station. So as you can imagine, how are we feeling? We were feeling a little bit impatient, a little bit frustrated. We were thinking this is gonna make us late for our arrival time and we needed the toilet, you know. So then I realized, hang on. I've got a trick up my sleeve here. I can use the law of assumption to declare that we're always gonna have the most easy and effortless and best days ever. So I said to Jamie, I said, okay, enough of this. <laughs> the rain's gonna stop. The perfect parking space is gonna open up right in front of us. We're gonna park with ease and the sun will be out by the time we get out of the car. We'll go to the toilet, we'll get everything we need and the rest of the journey is gonna be easy. And I kid you not, within the space of about 20 seconds, the sun came out, the rain started to ease, and a car about five meters in front of us turned on its engine, started to pull out, and there was no other cars competing with us for the space. And then we just parked straight into that space. Don't, don't miss an opportunity to use this technique, just to make your everyday life easier. 
Now, how does this work? Can I explain it? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know how it works. I don't know whether it is partly, like for example, when I lost things and found things, one explanation could be that my conscious mind is giving the instruction to my subconscious mind to figure out where I lost this thing because even if my conscious mind can't remember, my subconscious mind probably does, right? So I've always thought when it comes to finding things, it's probably just my subconscious going, whoop, this is where you left it. But other people, like I met this woman in a gym once and I lost my locker key and she said, oh, just ask St. Anthony. I was like, who's St. Anthony? She was like the patron saint of lost items or something. Someone who watches this will know better than me. She's like, yeah, anytime you lose anything, just ask St. Anthony. So she asks St. Anthony, I say to the universe or to my guardian angels, like all of these things are possibly different representations of the same source. Do you see what I mean? Whether you ask an angel, whether you ask a saint, whether you ask the universe, whether you ask your subconscious, Neville Goddard even goes as far as saying that our subconscious mind and our Im imagination from where all things are created is a form of God, like you could say that. And I'm not trying to be blasphemous here, I'm just quoting a theory that comes from Neville Goddard, right? That we are God, God is us, we are all one, we are all connected, and so on. We are the universe whether it's your subconscious mind, whether it is quantum physics happening right before your very eyes, whereby you are, maybe you can think of the title of a film that really depicts you, you know, stepping into different parallel realities. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's super cool. It's super cool. So, so I hope this video gave you some inspiration, gave you some ideas, gave you some, um, motivation to play around with this technique. Use it for good, use it for little things, use it for big things when you get a bit more confident with it. Imagine if you could just make every single day of your life easier and more effortless and for things to go your way. Abraham Hicks talks about segment intending, which means that before she enters each segment of her day, waking up and getting out of bed, walking from the bedroom down the corridor, entering the living room, turning on the lights and doing whatever you need to do in the living room. Those are all segments of her day. And she sets a mini intention before she enters each segment of her day to make sure that it's gonna be the best. I'm, I'm taking things from multiple sources and presenting it to you in this video. And I think that's always the best way that always helps me to believe in something more is when multiple sources all agree with the same conclusion. So happy manifesting, drop any success stories down below. If you've got a particularly powerful manifestation story that you want to share, you can hit the link in the description below because I'm compiling a whole archive of our success stories to publish into a book one day. So if you fill in the form, you're giving consent to have your story shared in the book when I publish it in the future. Thank you for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring my bell so that you never miss another video. And until next time, bye.